I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. In this chapter of the silent service, you will see the skipper, the USS Tarante, Lieutenant Commander George L. Street, carry out an attack for which he was awarded the Medal of Honor. This achievement was all the more noteworthy in that it occurred on the Tarante's first war patrol under a skipper entrusted with his maiden command in enemy waters and especially because the whole thing sprang from a brilliant hunch. We bring it to you as a true story, as authentic as we can make it. In March 1945, as events were mounting to a climax in the war against Japan, an empire now fighting desperately for its life, the USS Tyranny departed from the island of Saipan, bound for her patrol area in the Yellow Sea, between Japan and Korea, her first patrol. The captain and his executive officer shared two things, a burning desire to crown the Tyranny's first patrol with success, and a deep mutual respect. This is the skipper, Commander George L. Street of Richmond, Virginia. His confidence in his executive officer, Ned Beach, hailing from Palo Alto, California, who after the war became naval aide to President Eisenhower, was such that Street regarded Beach as his alter ego, dividing the burdens of command almost equally between them. And this was her gunnery officer, Lieutenant Endicott Peabody, former All-American Guard at Harvard, and son of a famous educator, Dr. Peabody of Groton School. Like many a minister's son, Chuck Peabody was full of fight and vinegar, and he was a natural leader. This is Lieutenant Ed Campbell of Philadelphia, the engineer officer, and Lieutenant Stocky Stocker, a language student before joining the Navy. The strongest man on board was Dale W. Remley, chief of the boat, it was said that Remley could lift a torpedo single-handed. One end, anyway. Shortly after the Tyranny arrived on station west of Japan, the captain called a meeting in the wardroom. I wonder what the old man has in mind. This wasn't the captain's idea. Wow, wow. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here, play a little ball. Hey. Easy with that thing, Peabody. How many times do I have to tell you it's Peabody? You ever had one of those? No. Well, neither have I. Anyway, you're now a grenade officer. See, I think Remley knows about hand grenades. That's right. Why don't you stick Remley with the job? I want you. Now, you get with Remley so you can instruct all the members of the boarding party. Aye, aye, sir. Aye. Skipper? Aye, aye. Captain. Gentlemen, this meeting was called by Mr. Peabody. So, I suggest we turn the meeting over to Mr. Peabody. Captain, I know this boarding party idea is going to pay off. Why, in Saipan, I heard the Japanese were using 3,000 junks and sampans, anything as a last resort to transport oil drums, goods, and supplies. A lot of small crap that we can't waste a torpedo on. Okay, okay, you told us about that part last time. Now, what about the tactics? That's what I want everybody's opinion on. Now, my idea is that we ran that junk at about three knots. That old penetrator plants just far enough so that we can hold her while we board. And we board her in two waves. The first wave secures grapnel store gunnels, rounds up the crew, searches the below deck for cargo, and grabs the ship's paper and log. Then we sink her. How many of you? Stalker, Spence, Renly, and I can handle it. Just the four of you? Suppose they act real hostile. Oh, now that's for the second wave under Ed Camel, if I can recruit him. Now the second wave mans the deck guns and uses automatic rifles to cover us in case the enemy fires back. Well, how does it sound? Any holes? One, maybe. Just one. Most of this crew thought they were being trained as uh, submariners, not pirates. Think you can count on any volunteers? I've already got five I've been drilling. And I think I can count on a few more. You, for instance, Ned? Oh, I can hardly wait. Well, anyway, if the plan has the captain's okay. You've got my blessing. At least it'll keep us from getting bored until we can find some big targets. And maybe we can find a prisoner, and then we can find out where the big ones really are. You know, when the Tarante was christened, everybody knew that she was a lucky ship. And we're not going to go home from this patrol empty-handed. Any questions? Nothing for me. Nothing, nothing. No, 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 no. That's it.
Got a minute, Captain? Sure, Dad. What's your inspiration this time? Now look, don't tell me you're still thinking about that Oniki Saki area. I've decided that they wouldn't risk putting their big ones in those harbor areas. The answer is no. I've given up on that idea, too. I got a new one. Are you really going to shoot me down on this one? It's almost pure hunch. Well, I won't shoot you down if it holds water. After all, we know they're hiding their big ones somewhere. Here, on Quelpart Island. You see this indentation on the northwest coast behind an island? Mm -hmm. It's a perfect spot for them to use. Why? Well, we know they've been getting through this route here by daylight. I've got a hole up somewhere overnight. Most likely in the shallow coastal waters where they won't expect submarines. Quelpart Island is a logical hiding place. Let's see. To reach that area, a sub would have to go through miles of shallow water where she couldn't dive because of reefs and shoals. No, you're right. They would feel safe there. And it's beyond the range of our aerial reconnaissance. It's unnatural. You know, Ned, you might just have something there. But as you say, it's only a hunch with a college education. I tell you what we'll do. If we can get more concrete evidence, oh, such as presence of mines, shore-based radar, I'll consider it. Seriously. Aye, aye, sir. In the meantime, let's look up some sampans for Peabody. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean Peabody. <laughs> Sail bearing 045. Lieutenant Peabody to the bridge, on the double. See what I see, Commando? A nice fat junk for you. Perfect. Perfect. Let me at him. You really think those commandos of yours are ready? Ready? They're overtrained. You give me ten minutes and watch us. Now remember, second wave, hold your fire unless those sports in the junk start something. Saki, you and Rumley take your positions behind me on the bullnose. And don't jump until I get a border first. Come on. Let's go. Make it four knots and hold it right on the button. Stand by the ram. Stand by the ram. Looks like all you'll need next time is Remley. Or Spence. I had to restrain him. He lost a brother in the trigger, you know. Well, Captain, it worked like a charm, not a hitch. And there she goes to the bottom with a full cargo. Good work, Chuck. We'll have to try this more often. 
Oh, tell Stocker to start interrogating those prisoners immediately. Oh, here's the uh, ship's papers and log. Thank you. And a uh, souvenir for you, Ned. Oh, thanks, Commando. Say, this is a very valuable clock. Priceless, you might say. Says right here, made in USA. With this auspicious beginning, he and his commandos carried out many more successful boardings. Volunteers ceased to be a problem. Every man in the crew suddenly wanted to be a member of the boarding party. Vince? Even Ned Beach, although he couldn't rid his mind of that sheltered harbor at Kelpart Island, he became more convinced than ever that here was where they'd find some really big game. I give up. He can't speak Japanese and he won't speak Korean. Not your brand of Korean anyway. I bet we could sweat it out of him. Maybe if we played that way. I guess that's how. How you doing, Gestapo? Ah, another dud. Afraid we got a pretty sorry excuse for an interpreter here. I never tried to palm myself off as any language expert. Okay. Okay, just keep trying, you guys. These fishermen just may know something about Quilpart Island. They've been running around in these waters all through the war. I'll make a deal with you, Ned. If we get the dope we need to bag a big ship, you lay off the remarks about my winning the war my way. It's a deal. Well, let's get this deaf mute out of here and bring in the next one. Sorry. I speak English. Why didn't you say so? Heard man say Quilpart Island. I changed mine. You know Quaypart Island? Know Quaypart Island very well. Good. When was the last time you were there? You pay money? Sure, we pay plenty of money. Come on, soccer, get it up. I'm strapped. I'll pay you back when I can. Big ships in harbor. Many mines, many guns, many airplanes in sky. Many towers with sail turning like this. Radar, everything. Cigarette? Thanks. Captain, about that Quelpart Island deal. Yeah? Boys have been interrogating that fisherman we picked up, and I'm satisfied that part of his information is reliable. Well, he's a Korean. There's not much for him to lose. Well, there's no love for Japan there, that's for sure. From what he says, there are mines and numerous patrol vessels in the area, and an unusual amount of air coverage. And you really believe this guy, huh? Yes, he's convinced me. I'd say now that we've got more than a hunch to go on. Yeah, but it's still only a hunch. But it's a good one. You know? Maybe we haven't been wasting our time with Peabody's commandos after all. There's only one way for us to find out, Ned. And that's to poke our nose in there. Get going and work me out a detailed plan. Got it right here. April 14, 1945, the Tarrante executed a wry approach to the hidden harbor at Quelpart Island. She crossed a 10-fathom curve, only 60 feet of water under the boat. Hardly enough to cover a big ship like Tarrante. From here in, she was committed. The lookouts and Commander Beach as off to the deck were all eyes and ears. Anything happening? Patrol boat bearing 030. You just barely make her out. 
First I thought she was starting to close on us, but now she's turned away. Mm. Let's hope so. At least we haven't fleshed out a flock of torpedoes or shore guns. No, the only sign of life are those five shore-based radars we've monitored. Apparently air search type. Well, they shouldn't be too effective against us. Five of them, you say? That shows we're on the right track. Floating mine! Off the port bow. Right, 10 degrees rudder! Right, 10 degrees rudder. Plenty of margin. Yeah, we're okay. Rudder amidships, steady as you go. Apparently that prisoner of yours was right when he said there were mines in here. Maneuvering, bridge. Make turns for six knots. Maneuvering, making turn for six knots. The Durante moved closer to a small island which blocked the inner harbor where she hoped to find an enemy anchorage. She had a choice of penetrating the inner harbor from the north or from the south. The Tyranny was now probing the southern approach. Nine fathoms. About as far as we can go on this approach, Ned. Yeah. You see anything in there that looks like ships? Thought for a minute I saw something. So did I. It's hard to tell against this shoreline, though. If we can't see ships from this range, we couldn't see to shoot. You think the anchorage is empty? No, not necessarily. Maybe we can get a better look if we try the northern approach. Keep about 1,200 yards offshore and circle the island. Aye, aye, Captain. Left 20 degrees rudder. Left 20 degrees rudder. Continue your single ping photometer readings every three to five minutes. Aye, sir. The Tyranny skirted around the island, sheltering the harbor until she was in position for another cautious approach from the north. Once again, she crossed the Ten Fathom curve. Ten Fathoms. Nine Fathoms. Eight Fathoms. You sure that thing's working, Remler? I see what you mean, sir. If this keeps up, we might as well get out and walk. <laughs> Seven fathoms. Well, another five minutes, we'll know one way or the other. See anything? Not yet. Small moving object on the port beam. It's an escort vessel. He's paralleling us. Two patrol vessels. I don't think they see us. Could be. Battle stations, Ned. Man your battle stations! Man your battle stations! Battle stations, torpedo! I see three or four ships! Three! Big ones! Patrol vessel turning toward us! Man the deck guns! Man the deck guns! Man the deck guns! Gun crew on deck! Man the deck guy. Gun crew on deck. Captain, she's turning away. Looks like a false alarm. But station your gun crews just in case. Why? Oh, We'll hug the island a little closer. Come left at five degrees. Come left, five degrees. Captain. Radar has three ship contacts. TDC plots them two, speed zero. Good, we've caught them at anchor. Secure the photometer readings. If they can get in there, so can we. Aye, aye, sir. Looks like an ammo ship. Two frigates near her. Okay. We'll move in closer and get this over with. Get on the largest target. Aye, aye, Captain. Ranging on the bigger ship now, 2,500 yards. That's about right. We'll try a sighting in shot using TBT bearings. The Durante backed down and lay to. A bow towed slightly out to combat the set of the current. Anytime you're ready, Ned. Good 
against the beach. Yeah, it missed to the right. Anyway, we know there's no torpedo nets. They think it's aircraft. to the small island to escape detection, the Tarante raced to evade one of the patrol boats, now hot on her trail. She reached deep water, and then the inevitable depth charging began. But after what the Tarante had been through, there was little panic. So believe it or not, Everything worked out just the way we planned. <laughs> Captain. Radio just picked up a message. The president is dead. Send out a report to the force commander. Save three ships. For FDR. Aye, aye, sir. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. I'm sure you all would like to meet the commander of the USS Tyranny and his executive officer. This is Captain George L. Street, the real-life skipper of the Tyranny, and Captain Edward L. Beach, his former executive officer. I agree with you about that slight smell of suicide. Well, it would have been too bad if we'd been boxed in at Kelpard, where we couldn't dive. The government has rewarded you with a Congressional Medal of Honor for this patrol. Did it seem at the time like your plan was above and beyond the call of duty? At the time? I'd just say it seemed like a good idea. A good idea with a strong smell of nerve and genius this time. Ned, everyone has been enjoying your submarine story so much. Do you have another one in preparation? Well, after all, my main job is being an officer of the United States Navy. But in answer to your question, I, I do have a few ideas. It's too bad that the old team of Street and Beach can't sail together again. That's one of the prices we pay for getting older. Well, congratulations to you both on this truly outstanding patrol in the Tarante. Please join us again for another exciting chapter of the silent service.